What's good, guys? Welcome to my channel where I help you to love the scriptures and to reform to the word of God. If this is your first time here, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified every time I post another video. And as you guys can see, I got my brother, Matthew, with me. Uh, we're going to be discussing the Trinity. And before we even start with that, um, introduce yourself to the people, your testimony, what you're all about, what your ministry is all about. And yeah, thank you for coming on. Oh, yeah, bro. Thank you for having me, dude. My name uh, is Matt Saban. And uh, yeah, I got saved pretty much uh, three years ago, and I got like a, like a humble little ministry going on online that I started last year, and it's been such a blessing. Um, I was not raised in a Christian home or nothing. My dad is a Reformed Jew, but it was a, a very secular upbringing because my mom ha has no faith or nothing. Um, she, they're both awesome people, but I was pretty much raised to believe the opposite of the gospel, and it really, uh, you know, just blew my mind, like uh, the sovereignty of God and how he straight up just plucked me out of the way that I was going and the lifestyle I had and just straight up drew me to Jesus. And, you know, the testimony, I got like a, a 50 year version of it that would take forever to explain. But but the essence of it is just like God called me like I was not looking for God. And the next thing I know, you know, three years later, I'm um, living for Jesus and born again and wholeheartedly believe the gospel it's truly a blessing amen bro urging to hear i love to hear that um and yeah your your ministry is so amazing and to see how god has been using you through tiktok and through other platforms is just so beautiful my favorite thing about you is this christianity is made by pagan religions it's a lie <laughs> Dude, i gotta do i gotta do more is a lie videos yeah bro yeah those videos <laughs> They're funny and I love them and I appreciate them. But yeah, we're talking about the Trinity. Um, this is a very important doctrine. This is not a, a open handed issue. This is a closed handed issue. Um, if you don't believe in the doctrine of the Trinity, I truly believe that you are not Christian. You do not believe in the orthodox um, view of the Godhead. Um, mm. and I don't say this just to be dogmatic. I say this just because the Bible teaches the Trinity and we must believe in the god of the bible to be christian yeah and it's, so there, this is a serious topic that we want to handle um and bro you can lead us in this yeah totally well for for me understanding the trinity uh you're right it always starts with the singular being of god and then the three persons so uh to sum it up yeah god is one being in three co-equal co-eternal persons as to their nature they are all god but they are not three separate gods which um and i know we're going to get into some of the errors but that's like totally like you know tritheism and all that like you can really mess up the trinity by overemphasizing the distinctions or you know completely ignoring them into some oneness you know pentecostalism type of thing so i guess me my favorite favorite scripture for trinity there's so many but you know it all starts with you know john 1 1 like in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So simultaneous, simultaneously, you have the word as John 1 14 later reveals to be, of course, Jesus. You have Jesus being simultaneously with God in relationship with God. Uh, you know, proston theon is the Greek there with God, like an intimate face to face relationship. But then simultaneously, as to his nature, he was God. So that's like my favorite one. And of course, he's alluding to Genesis, you know, the first chapter of Genesis. And that, of course, oh, what were you going to say, bro? Oh, cool, cool. I think I may have lost your audio, dude, by the way. Let me see. No, 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 you're good. I just muted myself just for, like, background oh, noise. For sure, my bad. Um, but, yeah, like, Genesis 1 um, with how, you know, John's clearly alluding to that in the beginning, you know, and you have in Genesis 1, 2, you have, you know, the spirit of God. Like, so it's very interesting how uh, within the doctrine of the Trinity, the, the same singular being of God has three persons with different functions and um yeah man yeah i could go on but uh feel free to interject yeah it's to guide yeah, me. It's important that we see that distinction in john one between the father and the son because like you said he was god and he was with god in relationship with god and yeah. one thing that we have to do as well is establish the deity of christ when talking about the trinity and john one one does a perfect job of doing that for us and one thing I want to go through briefly, and I know that, you know, a lot of people already believe this, but is monotheism. And I think that the reason why we have to, to establish that we believe in 
monotheism is because the, the critics against the Trinity will try to say that we don't believe in monotheism and they will bring objections and it is right. that thinking we believe in tritheism um but we have to make that distinction and understand that we believe in one god who exists in three distinct persons um but a, a verse that clearly shows monotheism is isaiah 45 isaiah 45 verse 5 says i am the lord and there is no other besides me there is no god i will gird you though you have not known me so clear in scripture that there is one god but now matt if you can Take us through scripture where it tells us that Jesus is God and the Holy Spirit is God. And it's easy to believe that the Father is God. So we don't really have to defend that. But for right, Jesus, right. the Holy Spirit, is those are the two. We'll defend. Right. Well, I always go to, you know, John 8, 58. If we're just trying to prove, uh, you know, just straight up that Jesus is God, claimed to be God, you know, John 8, 58, where Jesus claims to be the eternal I am that revealed to Moses in the burning bush. So that alone, and I know people fight it, as I'm sure you've encountered too, like people always try to deflect and go, oh, no, 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 but how come in Luke, uh, you know, Luke 22 and Luke 11, why does, why does Jesus pray to the Father, like completely, you know, unfortunately, you know, displaying, you know, an ignorance of what scripture teaches of the nature of God. But John 8, 58, it's as clear as day that Jesus not only is Yahweh, but that he claims to be, you know, the I am that revealed uh, the God of Israel that revealed himself to Moses. So then on top of Jesus claiming to be God, John 8, 58, you have, um, of course, the word of God, you know, later in John, or sorry, earlier in John 1, 3, where uh, scripture so boldly states that Jesus, it was through Jesus that everything was created. And Colossians uh, 1 also stating the same thing. So th these are very bold uh, yeah, not so subtle claims whatsoever that Jesus is the eternal creator and that he is the God of Israel. And then, if, yeah, Jude, yeah. Jude one five as well. Yeah, bro. And I think another, another way that we can defend the deity uh, of Christ is in understanding where Isaiah says, where the father says, I will share my glory with none other. But then in John chapter 17, Jesus says, glorify me with the glory that we had before the world existed the mm -hmm. son is someone who receives glory we see that as well in hebrews chapter 1 verse 6 where it says the angels bow down before him if jesus wasn't god and angels bowed down before him or even thomas when he said my lord my god where he knelt before him and worshiped him right that was for to do if jesus wasn't god and Straight jesus up. would corrected thomas and he would have corrected the angels but of course he did it so the son like i said is someone who receives glory and the glory only goes to god um God'll proving is god amen yeah scripture is so clear god alone deserves worship and jesus so clearly accepts worship again and again man because he it, and rightfully so because jesus is god yeah and one of the to get to the next point but one of the um major heresies in church history and that is still prevalent today is one is pentecostalism where they believe yeah. that one being who exists in one person and they, that jesus they do believe that jesus is god but they also believe that he is the father and that he is the holy spirit and i think that it is very important like i said in the beginning to make the distinction between the personhood of the father son and the holy spirit and if you can take us through passages that sh clearly show us uh, the distinction between those three persons um that would oh, be great oh yeah dude well honestly i'm glad you said that because the first thing that comes to mind is matthew 3 13 with the baptism of jesus dude because that you straight up see like all three persons of god they are all present but they are all distinct like you know the father like and yeah dude oneness pentecostalism is so dangerous man because the father remained in heaven like the father was not crucified you know what i mean the father sent the son Yeshua, you know what I'm saying? So when you see the baptism of Christ in Matthew 3, 13, you have the spirit anointing Jesus. You have the father separate declaring, you know, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. And then you, of course, have the Christ. You have the Messiah, Jesus, the son of God, the eternal son of God being the center of all of this, you know, glory. So that would be probably my my go to Matthew 3, 13. And of course, onward. My, my go-to would be John 17, um, the high priest prayer, right? And because they believe that 
um, God is one being and one person. They believe that what before for all eternity past, there was just one being and one person there in heaven. But in the high priestly prayer, like I quoted before, Jesus said, glorify me with the glory that we had before the world existed. So we see the son speaking to the father, right? Um, and that shows the personhood of Christ. And to get to the next point, the Holy Spirit showing the person, personhood and the deity of the Holy Spirit. And I think that the Holy Spirit gets thrown into the back burner a lot. It does. Yeah. We, we focus a lot on the deity of Christ where we forget that we have to establish the deity of the Holy Spirit as well. Um, again, people like Jehovah's Witnesses who believe that the Holy Spirit is just a force and not really a person. Um, right. But a proof text I like to go to is Acts chapter 5. I don't know if you know the story of Ananias and Sapphira where yeah. they they went to Peter and they lied basically and they gave a certain amount of money to them and they acted as if they gave more than they, what they actually gave, right? So right, right. it went to um, Peter. Peter told Ananias, why have you lied to God, All right? He told him, why have you bring it about yourself to lie to God? And then later in that chapter, he then says, why have you lied against the Holy Spirit? Now right. you see that first he calls it, he's saying he lied to God, but then now he's saying he's lying to the Holy Spirit. That's because the Holy Spirit is also God and he is also a distinct person. But what do you have to say about the distinction uh, in the Holy Spirit's personhood? Oh, totally, man. I would, I mean, that's a great one you picked, bro. And another one is the uh, the doxology that Paul gives in 2 Corinthians um, 13, 14, right? Where he, he distinctly says the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And I love that man because it's straight up like what it ties together all like the, you know, the Emmanuel prophecy, like God with us, like the whole point God is with us is because we are sealed and guaranteed with the Holy Spirit indwelling um, us. You know what I'm saying? So to me, 13 13 14 where and there's of course so much about the trinity in that verse alone but with the holy spirit like the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all like we have fellowship with god because of jesus and that fellowship is manifest through the holy spirit equally god equally to the holy spirit's nature the being of god but that's so beautiful is that inside of you bro inside of me inside of every born again say believer is god God is within us. Like, you're right. The Holy Spirit and, you know, of course, Holy Ghost and their name for it. I feel like, especially coming from like secular thought, like people don't, I mean, of course, people don't give God the reverence he deserves, but the Holy Spirit is almost like um, so underappreciated and, and under acknowledged. So yeah, the Holy Spirit is just as much God as Jesus is. And the Holy Spirit is just as much God as our father is. But the distinction is that the Holy Spirit is within us, like the fellowship of God inside of us yes sir amen bro um so a question i'd like to ask is how do you um give arguments against tritheism because when you talk to Muslims, when you talk to jehovah's witnesses you talk to even one is pentecostals who like to misrepresent our view and strawman our view they would like to say that we believe in three gods so how would you go against that i will go against that and i feel like that's almost easier i mean of course it's it's never easy uh, depending on who you're going against but as opposed to modalism tritheism seems to me coming from like you know just whatever my background is i feel like because if you go to the old testament it's so clear like you said you quoted isaiah but you could you know it's like of course the shema also it's like if there's one thing you know for darn sure throughout the entire tanakh is that god is one you know what i mean god is a hot you know what i'm saying and so it's kind of hard to, it's, it's almost like throughout the Bible, you know what I mean, bro? Like if you're trying to say that, that God, it, you know, the distinctions are so overemphasized that, that we're worshiping three different gods. Like, and you see that again all the time in TikTok comments, like, oh, sounds like three gods to me, but it's like, no, it's like, just throw out the entire Bible then, because it's harder to do the other way. Like, of course, God is one, of course, God is a high, like that's over and over. So again, I would quote to the Shema, you know what I mean? We worship the God of Israel. You know, we are to have, no, you know, uh, no other gods besides Yahweh. You know what I mean? So if we, if there was any sort of competition, like we're, we're already idolatrous, you know what I mean? By that uh, perception of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, certainly as, as far as scripture goes, man, yeah, I would go to uh, 
Deuteronomy 6, 4. You know what I mean? Hero Israel. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. the and then, of course, almost on a side note, forgive my tangent, but when, when I think of that also, it's how um, in uh, Genesis 2, 24, where you have um, a man leaving his father and mother, cleaving to his wife, and the two becoming one. And how that's a beautiful um, uh, illustration of a, a Trinitarian concept as well, is that even though Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit are separate persons, they are one in the same way uh, a marriage is one. And of course, um, there's a whole you know rabbit hole we could go down with like marriage and Christ and the church and everything. But but yeah, the Shema even in itself is a beautiful you know the Shema sandwiched with uh, Genesis two twenty four. Just anytime a Had appears in the Bible. Um, yeah, so forgive my ramble there, but but certainly good, the scripture is very clear. God is one, one being. Yeah, you're good, bro. Um, so I think that's something that we have to continue to reiterate is, and that we've been saying it for years and decades and centuries now, but that we have to keep pressing is that God is one being who exists in three distinct co-equal and co-eternal persons. That's something that we okay. just have to keep saying. Though people try to misrepresent us and try to, they don't listen, but that's something that we have to continue to 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 press on and push on and i oh, think yeah. i think people who try to say we believe in tritheism and we worship three gods don't follow basic exegetical tools and basic hermeneutics because we don't we don't come to a conclusion because there's two ways where we can get doctrine from from what the bible clearly says and what the verses clearly says and what the bible leads us to believe Right? Right, right. So the Bible leads us to believe the Trinity. There's no verse that says, like, this is the Trinity, or there's no verse that says the word Trinity, and there's no right. one, there's not one verse that clearly teaches the Trinity. But the whole Bible in, in its entirety leads us to believe in the Trinity, and that's why we believe it. And one is Pentecostals, or I watch a lot of debates with one of the Pentecostals, they like to argue from the old testament scriptures and only the old testament scriptures and the reason why they do that is because they know if we get to the new testament they're going to lose they they're going to lose see the distinction between the three three persons the father son and the holy spirit but they like to stay in the old testament and that's just bad hermeneutics because like i said we don't believe in the trinity because there's like one clear verse or even one clear chapter that teaches it but it's because we believe it it's because the Bible leads us to believe it. I think and it's a problem with hermeneutics and how you interpret the scriptures. Yeah, no, amen. Everything you said just now is absolute truth, man. It's so true. The Bible as a whole so clearly teaches the nature of God. As true. Oh, but yeah, guys, that was the intro to the Trinity. I hope you guys liked it. And like I said in the beginning, if you like this video, I encourage you to like the uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to be notified every time I post another video. See you guys next week.